A very warm welcome to ITB Berlin, to the ITB convention, and welcome to a session which is really close to my heart. The International To-Do Awards of the German Studienkreis for Tourism and Development, who are one of the pioneers of responsible tourism truly, and a long-standing partner of ITB. And I'm also very happy to be a member of the jury. So, Claudia, welcome. Yes, Rika, hello. A warm welcome also from my side. Today we want to honor the winners of the To-Do Award and the To-Do Award Human Rights in Tourism 2022. The To-Do Award already has a long history. Since 1995, the prize has been awarded. And one of our partners who supported us on, the, uh, on our way to, is ITB Berlin. Therefore, I'm very happy that Rika Jean-Francois, Commissioner of ITB Corporate Social Responsibility, will hold the laudation today. Rika, please, it's your turn. Thank you, Claudia. This is really an honor. Actually, yeah, um, as we already said, we're coming together to introduce the winners of the To Do Awards 2022, the distinguished international contest for social responsible tourism of the Studienkreis, uh, to our worldwide audience, actually. And it's the 27th edition already. So, um, with, the, with this international to-do contest, the Studienkreis has since 1995 awarded initiatives that really enable local people's participation and their involvement in decision-making on tourism projects, products and services. As we all know, tourism is an important economic factor for many destination, uh, destinations and it's mandatory that local people should also benefit, plan and market tourism according to their perception, you know. So this strengthens, of course, local economies and creates new sources of income. Like this, socially responsible tourism boosts people's self-efficiency and appreciates cultural identities. But it's not only the to-do award itself, there's also the to-do award for human rights and tourism. Human rights and tourism must be high up on the agenda on, and on a permanent base, you know, and upon the initiative of the Studienkreis and um, um, the, the To Do Award, uh, Human Rights and Tourism was, a fir uh, was awarded for the first time at ITB Berlin in 2017. Uh, so this year will be already the sixth award again. So the criteria for the award were developed in close coordination, of course, with the Roundtable of Human Rights and Tourism, ITB is also a member, and it's a cooperation of stakeholders from civil society, tourism industry, and policymakers. So, and if you haven't heard about it yet, you should get yourself informed and become part of it. Um, the award serves to honor initiatives, projects, and individuals committed to the principles of human rights along the tourism supply chain and that in an exemplary manner. So it is my pleasure now to, to honor and introduce you the projects, the winner projects um, of two distinguished, uh, of these two uh, distinguished awards. So we will start with the To Do Award of Human Rights we've just been talking about. And this goes to Agikat. Agikat was founded in 2016 as an association to defend the interests of licensed tourist guides in Catalonia. The license is given by the Catalonian government to enable guides to exercise the profession legally, showing protected heritage sites. A threat to liberalize the, prof uh, the profession in 2016 was a starting point for this association. So, and over the past six years now, Agicat, which currently has approximately 400 members, I think, has been fighting on different levels to improve the working conditions of guides, um, yeah, especially uh, the licensed ones, of course. Um, the association's key values are responsible and quality tourism. In that sense, Agicat works to, con to convince local authorities to reduce group sizes and minimize acoustic pollution by making, an, by making it obligatory to use whisper sets for certain group sizes, which makes sense. Both measures aim at ensuring a good coexistence with the residents of the city, guaranteeing more decent working conditions for the guides and improving the experiences also for the visitors. Moreover, Agigat collaborates with local authorities and stakeholders to improve also mobility and thus 
reduce contamination. They try to help authorities to find more sustainable ways of managing tourism, which has become a challenge, especially, you know, in Barcelona before the pandemic, it really suffered from, from over tourism. So reinforcing a positive image of the guiding profession and creating awareness of the working conditions of licensed and non-licensed guides in Catalonia is a very important issue. They promote an ethical way of working through a binding code of conduct even. And by offering also about 30 training activities for its members each year, Agigat also has become, um, yeah, also promotes continuously the training of licensed guides. So through leisure activities, the association also builds links between member guides to promote collaboration, sharing of knowledge and savoir-faire to ensure a high quality of guided tours. Yeah, and last but not least, they even get active at social events, offering free guided tours to local citizens and vulnerable population. So congratulations, Agigat. Very good project. But yeah, we also have another award and that's the main to do award and the main to do award 2022 goes to Himalayan ecotourism yeah Himalayan ecotourism from India really involves an exemplary manner in, a, in an exemplary, exemplary manner, the local population and practices of sustainable tourism, creating alternative sources of income and strengthening people's self-esteem by valuing their culture and traditions. The, the Great Himalayan National Park is situated in the Indian state of Imachal Pradesh, founded in 1984 to protect its rich flora and fauna. The national park was declared a World Natural uh, Heritage Site by the UNESCO in 2014, which was, of course, a great success for, cons uh, for conservation. But the local villagers lost their rights of using the forest, which happens all the time in national parks, you know, and they had been using the forest for, for their income for centuries but suddenly they were left out in the rain, you know. So when tracking tourism started, it looked like it could have been an opportunity to compensate for the lost income opportunities. Um, there are actually no settlements and, and, and huts and, and markers are passed within this national park. So just um, in the wilderness, you would really need trackers to, to guide you. So porters were also needed. But, but the local guides and porters, the wages were extremely low. So they didn't see a future in that. It was really, yeah, too low to, to do that. So in order to participate, uh, to participate in tourism and to obtain higher wages, a group of 65 villagers launched a local cooperative. Uh, um, but, but when they had launched it, the tour operators still refused to contract those members said, why should we contract them? They're more expensive and so on. But, and that was a very, very good move to be able to organize tracks with members of this cooperative. Um, yeah, a guy called Stefan Marshall who's here with us today too, actually from Belgium, but living since 2003 already in India, who is a social entrepreneur. He co-founded to help the, 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 the community, the Himalayan ecotourism um, company. So, like that, the wages could be fixed by the cooperative in line with the members' demands and the market uh, and new market rates. About 80% of the income from, from this Himalayan ecotourism um, company is paid out of out as wages and is also retained by the cooperative as reserves for, for, for worse times and to, you know, to reinvest. In addition, special Himalayan ecotourism projects for women, they like the production, sale and dispatch of special apricot soap and oil, also contributed um, to increasing family incomes in that, re uh, in that region. Yeah, and more and more members by now are also um, setting up homestays. So it has really become a, a great initiative and experts from the To Do Award were on the ground and they really saw with their own eyes that this is happening and it's no greenwashing involved. 
like this, as we said, a significant part of the income from tourists benefits the local population, and their work has been very successful with almost every family, a family benefiting from, from higher incomes. You know, of course, until the COVID pandemic came in between, but um, we will learn a bit more about that later when Michael and Jagitov who are here from the project will talk about this. So this has made the community proud and has really boosted their commitment. They also agreed to launch a reforestation project. So Himalayan ecotourism is a social enterprise and in the medium term, after successful training on the job, uh, local people are expected to take over only. So, yeah, they also provide high quality equipment, which illustrates that eco in the name is relevant. Ecotourism also includes resource conservation, sustainability. Eco means more than just nature tracks, of course. So congratulations to Himalayan ecotourism, well deserved. And with that, I'm handing back to Claudia. Yes, thank you very much, Rika. And then we start with the to-do about human rights in tourism. As you said already, the award honors since 2017 already initiatives, projects and individuals who are extraordinarily committed to the protection and respect of human rights principles along the entire value chain. And this year, the award goes to Aquicat, an association of tour guides in Catalonia. What they do and what they stand for, they will explain in a short video. Let's see the film. Aquicat was founded in 2016 as an association to defend the interest of licensed tourist guide in Catalonia. The license is given by the Catalonian government to exercise the profession legally, showing protected heritage sites. A threat to liberate the profession in 2016 was the starting point of this association. Over the past six years, Aguicat, who has 400 members approx, has been fighting for the rights of the guides and the working conditions, especially of the licensed ones. The key values of the association are responsible and quality tourism. In this sense, Agicat works to convince local authorities to reduce group sizes and minimize acoustic pollution by making it obligatory to use whisper sets for certain group sizes. Both measures aim at ensuring a good coexistence with the residents of the city guaranteeing more decent working conditions for the guides and improving the experience of the visitors. Agicat works together with local authorities and institutions to improve mobility. This helps Barcelona reduce pollution. Agicat tries to help authorities find more sustainable ways of managing tourism, which has become a challenge in Barcelona since before the pandemic arrived, Barcelona really suffered from over-tourism. Agicat reinforces a positive image of the guiding profession and creates awareness of the working conditions of licensed and non-licensed guides in Catalonia. Agicat promotes an ethical way of working throughout its code of conduct, which was written by and it's binding for its members, and by signing a code of best practices with the city administrations throughout the territory, like Barcelona or Tarragona. Agicat promotes continuous training of licensed guides. It actually schedules around 30 training activities each year for its members. Through leisure activities, Agicat builds links between members to promote collaboration and sharing the knowledge and software to have high quality guided tours. Agicat contributes to social events such as fundraisers by offering free guided tours to local population and vulnerable people. Macarena, the president of Aquigat, is with us today. So, congratulations, and this is your trophy, I hope. <laughs> really. It's Thank you, trophy. Claudia. Thank you. And what is also very important is this one. It's a certificate of the prize money of 5,000 Swiss francs, sponsored by SST, the Swiss Foundation for Solidarity in Tourism. So, Macarena, let's talk about a little bit about your association. So, 
Yet, yeah, first of all, we are very grateful. This award is for us um, an opportunity to show the world the need more than ever of our work. Because License Guide, we, I think we bring a human and an emotional value to tourism that is something um, irreplaceable. And we feel like ambassadors in our own land. And that, that is why I think our work is something exceptional. So we are extremely honored to receive this recognition. We didn't expect it, but all in all, and after all the work is very welcome. And why not? Well deserved. So thank you again. Yes. Macarena, in the film, we have seen already some of your colleagues explaining the work of Aquicat. How do you value the work, uh, value the work you do? What is the, its meaning? So in Agicat, we want to be a reference in tourism. We are a modern collective and we are eager to be known as professionals defending responsible and quality tourism. And something very important, maybe without the work, the sacrifice and the time that the previous boards have dedicated in a totally altruistic way to defend license guides, Today, we will not be here because our profession would have disappeared. Yeah. And what has Aquicat done to improve the working conditions of the guides? Can you give us some examples? So, um, I, think, I think the most important one is that Aquicat has convinced the Catalan Tourism Board to maintain our license. And now we have a new badge. In, um, on the new badge, we have a QR code and a photograph. And this is something very important because it means that museums and monuments can easily check the validity of the license. And not only this, but we also made a, we, we made a code of good conduct. And it, this is something mandatory for all our members. And as we have seen on the video, uh, we organize and we promote continuous trainings for license guides. So, Agicat offers like 30 exclusive training activities for licensed guides for its members each year. Ah, okay. <laughs> and what are the challenges and future goals for your association? You have short or long-term mm -hmm. objectives? So, for example, right now we are helping to create a tour guide search platform that will allow everybody to find the guide they're searching for. But our main goal is to keep promoting the figure of the licensed guide. In order to that, we need to convince the administrations that they must to be brave implementing simple but effective actions. Because finally, our will is to make our cities world leaders of fair, sustainable and respectful tourism. Oh, perfect. Very good. So, Rika? Wonderful. I, I have said already everything. They're wonderful. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Please continue your wonderful work. Yes. Thank you very much. So, thank you very much, Macarena. Yeah, then we will come to the To Do Award, the Contest for Socially Responsible Tourism. Sustainable tourism is only possible if all the people concerned are involved in the planning and implementation of these projects. So participation of the local community from the beginning is essential. Gender equality, cultural identity and socio-economic independence will then serve to guarantee its success. And this project demonstrates this in an impressive manner. The To Do Award 2022 goes to Himalayan tourism, ecotourism from India. They have produced a short film to inform us about their work. So let's see the, first, the film first.
this year the judges decided on Himalayan ecotourism. Get everyone on board to acknowledge. Yes, life is better with more forests. So perfect. Stefan and Chakita, congratulations. And this is your trophy. Wait, I have to see it in the film. <laughs> you see it now? And this is also your certificate of the prize money, which is here. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, we yeah. have to say, Chakita is now at the Himalayan in Himalaya and we are so happy that she is with us because it was not easy to get a good internet connection with her but Jagita we are more than you're more than welcome that you are here so, you so <laughs> <laughs> Stefan one of the core criteria of the to-do is the participation of the community explain us a little bit how does it work that the whole community gains money with hiking and trekking tours Mm, yeah, right. You know, actually, uh, it's not all about um, money. Actually, uh, of course, uh, getting an income from uh, any tourism activities is uh, very much what we want to see. Uh, but when you observe a standard marketplace, uh, actually the labor, the people who are uh, engaged in tourism activities without having a, a, an educational background, those who have less education, uh, usually, they are kept at a lower position and they do not have a lot of economic opportunities. And that's, that's very sad, but it is like that. So what uh, we are trying to do is uh, trying to take uh, these locals who are working for, as a trekking staff outside the survival sphere. Uh, they should reach a certain economic um, uh, status where they can see opportunities for them to open and uh, for that you need we need to reinvent, reinvent how the market works and so the only option for us what we have tried and what is uh, seems to work is to bring the people together and so that's why we have registered this cooperative society and so we are actually bringing the locals in the business they are partner uh, so if the company grows they will also grow with the company uh, that is very a very different situation because uh, if you are just a, a daily wage earner, you will remain where you are. But if you are part of a cooperative as a shareholder with everyone at the same level, uh, there is no boss, there is no competition competition between the people. Um, if you work within such structure, actually you take responsibility, and uh, you happily grow together. You envision the future together, and um, so that is what we are trying to maintain. Yeah, that sounds very good. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we think about tracking guides, the majority will be male guides normally. 
what do you do to strengthen the women in your community? Jaquita, we saw that you have also launched a women's project. Please tell us a little bit about it. I will let Jaquita to speak a little bit. Yes. If she, if she has any difficulties, I will help her. Perfect. Jagita? Yes. Will you be able to explain us a little bit? Kuch kuch bol sakte? I speak to Hindi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, say a few words in Hindi then. Hindi me bolo kuch. Jaldi, jaise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think the internet is not so easy at the moment. Maybe, uh, Stefan, you can talk about a little bit about the uh, yeah. women's project. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually very sad that ITB did not happen uh, in, <laughs> in Berlin because it would have been so nice to bring Jagita from her small village in the Himalayas uh, to leave her valley, to leave her uh, state, to leave her country, to take a plane, to see big cities, to see the world. Uh, which he has never seen so far, but maybe uh, it will come one day. Um, next year, <laughs> next year. <laughs> Why not? Uh, yeah, so, you know, uh, in this part of the world, I'm talking about the Himalayas, the woman's status is quite low, very sadly. Uh, and so when you work for a uh, woman empowerment, you are actually in opposition with the, with the local culture. So, uh, you know, to improve the situation of the men, to improve their income and their work condition is quite easy because all the villagers will see that very positively. But as soon as you are trying to uh, bring the woman in, uh, to engage them in uh, economic activities, um, there you will face some opposition because it is against the culture. And so uh, the reason is that the workload, the workload, sorry, the workload of the woman at home, in the field, in the forest, is so much that actually they do not have time to go in the mountains for a trek. And so um, when I ask, when, when I have the opportunity to organize a woman trek, uh, that is specifically when uh, all our clients are women, then we say, okay, so for you, we can have only women staff. And uh, so I call Jagita and say, Jagita, that is for you. You please organize a trek. So she will call in turn all her friends uh, in the in the village and uh, to try to get the team uh, ready. The problem is most of the families won't give the permission for the woman to go on trek. And so, so far, we did not get a 100-person woman team because of that problem. So as a solution, we thought that uh, we have decided that uh, at the end of the last year, we will actually double the wages of the woman. And um, so that will be a big challenge. Uh, first, because the men may take it wrong. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. But you know, if they value so much the work of the woman at home, uh, so they will have to understand that actually the, the time of woman is worth more than the time of men somehow. And that will uh, probably uh, help us to move ahead. Uh, yeah. But on the other side, uh, it will be also more expensive for the clients, mm -hmm. but that they will have to understand that doing business in the right way, it has a cost and they have to pay. That's, that's how it has to happen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, time is running oh. <laughs> and we have to come to an end. We thank you. We want to thank all our sponsors who supported the award, even during these hard times. And when you think that your project means the criteria of the To Do Award, the next round for the To Do Award 2023 started already, and we will wait for your applications. Visit our website to do contest.org to get more information about. So thank you, thank you, Rika, and thank you all for watching. And I hope to see you next year thank in you. person in Berlin. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you so Bye. Thank you. <laughs>